these religions, because they deviated from the path of Ahl al-Bayt, where the true knowledge was, they will fail. And even so, within the fiqh of Islam, within the religion of Islam, all the other 72 sects, they will also fail. Because they have separated themselves from the Ahl al-Bayt. So therefore, the knowledge that they have, it weakens their Iman. It weakens their Yaqeen and their certainty. So knowledge is very key, my brothers and sisters. The other point of Iman and Yaqeen and certainty is to stop us from doing bad deeds. It is to create a sense of security. It is a, to create a society that is built on security and safety. Because if you look, like I said last night, if you have yaqeen and certainty, there is a day of judgment. It will stop you from doing many things. If in the roads that you are driving, they remove all the security cameras, the safety cameras that flash when you drive over a certain speed limit, how many people will then drive within the speed limit? Because you see, as soon as someone pulls up, they know there's a security camera, safety camera, they put on the brake. Why? Because they have a yaqeen and certainty that there is a camera. Even though they do not know if there is any film in that camera, whether it is recording or whether that flash is just a false flash, they will still slow down. Because their certainty and their yaqeen is that that will take my picture, I will get a 60 pound fine and I will get three points on my license. You can see I know very well about this issue. <laughs> But if you remove these cameras, society then becomes a jungle. People say, oh, look at Saudi Arabia. It is a model Islamic country. Because when you go into Mecca, the guy who is selling the gold in the marketplace, when it's time for namaz, he just puts a cloth over his shop with all that gold inside. He goes and does his prayers and he comes back. No one steals any of the gold. Therefore, the people in that city are the true Muslims. They have a true yaqeen in the day of judgment. I say to them, it is not the fear of Allah or the day of judgment they do not steal. It's because they are scared that their fingers will be chopped off. So this is the yaqeen that if we truly, as a community, we all have to start individually. Because in Islam, everything begins within the self being then the family, then the greater society. So we have to really truly believe that there is a day of judgment. And once we take that upon ourselves, that look, the accounting on the day of judgment is very precise, like I mentioned last night. If we have that, then we create a society that is built on amanat, which is an amn society. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim to create the Kaaba, he then says in the Quran, kana That whoever enters this house will be safe. Because Allah wants to create a society that is safe. If we had that society within our communities now, how easily would we be able to leave? Because then we will see that I can trust my brother in Iman with my belongings. I can even trust him with my women because I know that he is a true mu'min. And if he is a true mu'min, he has a fear of God and the day of judgment. Therefore, he will not take my property. <coughs> Yet how many of you now, when you walk into the mosque and you have a mobile phone, you leave it in your coat with your wallet and everything, you make sure it is zipped up. Or sometimes even before you come into the mosque, you lock it in your glove compartment. Because you do not trust one another inside the mosque of God. Is that not the case? Therefore, there is no security. When there is no security, society becomes a jungle. Where is no yaqeen and iman and faith on the day of judgment. One alim was saying to me that there was an incident that he witnessed when he was a young lad. He was studying in Najaf al-Ashraf. May Allah on these holy nights and with the drops of the Shuhadai al Karbala, the drops of their blood, grant all of us the ziyarat of the shrine of Amir al Mu'mineen and Imam Hussein 
in Karbala and Samarra and all the holy cities, insha'Allah. <laughs> This alim says when I was a young boy, I was studying in Najaf for Ashraf and I was walking through the marketplace and I saw there was a commotion. There was one guy shouting to the shopkeeper and he was calling him all sorts of things. I went up to him and I said, what is wrong? He said, this man has taken my belongings and he won't give it back. So I said, what is the story? He said, well, I've just come back from doing the Hajj. And in those days, when people went to Hajj, they normally took them three to four months. By the traveling, by the time they spent time, and the time they came back. So what they used to do is because there were no banking systems, there wasn't any safe deposit boxes, they used to come to the marketplace and used to ask, who is the Amin of this marketplace? And whoever they said it was, they would put all their belongings, that they should call coins and things like that, in a box, they would leave it with him, they would go to Mecca with a peace mind that this Amin will look after my property, and I will come back and I will collect it. So he says to him, says this is what happened to me. I gave all my belonging to this shopkeeper because they said he is Amin. And now I have come back from Mecca. He is saying, I don't know what you are talking about. So the alim said to him, did you take a receipt? Did you take a receipt when you gave the box? He said, no. Because I thought he was an Amin, he's a truthful man, I forgot to take a piece of paper to say that you have left this box with me. So the alim says, look, even though he is an Amin person, he is a Muslim and you are a Muslim, but the Holy Prophet says that wherever there is any transaction between two Muslims, write it down. So you made a mistake. So he says, I don't know what I can do for you, because he is denying any knowledge. It's your word against his. Do you have any witnesses? No, there are no witnesses. So this young alim says that the only thing I can think of is if we go together now, to the shrine of Amir al-Mu'mineen. There is a Sayyid in that shrine who leads the Jama'at prayers. He is a very pious man. He is a Mawlana, he is a, he's a Sayyid, he's a very old man. Maybe if he comes and speaks to him, he might be able to get your belongings back. So they went. They told the story of what happened to the Sayyid. The Sayyid said, come with me, give me five minutes, I will get all your belongings back. So they went with the Sayyid. The Sayyid said, you stay outside the shop. I will go in, give me five minutes, and I will bring back your box. <clears throat> True to his word, the Sayyid went in. Five minutes later, he came back with the little box. He said, open it. The guy, the guy opened it. Said, everything in there? He said, everything is in there. He said, take your box and go. But next time, remember to get a receipt. This Adam says, what did this Sayyid do in that shop? What did he say to that guy? That this guy gave the box, whereas before he was denying it and swearing on the Quran that he had never even seen this box. He had never even seen this man. So I said to the Sayyid, please tell me, what was your secret? So the Sayyid said, come with me. They went to the house of the Sayyid. The Sayyid opened up his cloak, opened up his shirt. He showed his shoulder to this alim. There was two fingerprints burnt marks on the shoulder of this Sayyid. The Alim said, what are these fingerprint scars on your shoulder? The Sayyid said, I was a young student in the Hawza in Najaf. I was very poor. I did not have enough money just to even buy bread some days. I asked around for people to help me, give me some money, Ghazal Hasana. As usual, the Muslims did not come forward. Because whenever it comes to money, the people always take a back step, you know. So I had no other choice. I asked around, where else can I get money? They said there is a Jewish tailor in Najaf. He will give money. And usually, because he's a good man, he's a good Jew, 
He will not charge any interest to the students.